Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello, and welcome back. Yes, uh, a big take two here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, typically we, we like to start our days out with mantras. We do a clearing ritual to get rid of any negative energies. Um, but we've worked six days straight as far as people um, go. Uh, it wasn't planned that way, but it just worked out that way. Um, of course, we do videos every single day. So, you know, we didn't get to uh, the mantras until after we recorded what we felt was a great message, uh, putting a lot of pieces together, and then saw it was a jumbled mess uh, because we didn't clear the energy first. Mm -hmm. So we went back and we just did mantras and meditation, and Cindy got a message from the guides. So we're starting off here. Racing the Sun to Protect America, Lessons from the Solar Storm of May, May 1921. Did you guys know that in May 1921, there was uh, a series of CMEs, solar flares, with impacts on the world that actually set fire in the U.S. to random telegraph and telephone offices, bursting into flame, fuses blown, equipment damaged, that there was aurora, northern lights, all the way down to Pasadena, California. Night sky in Boston, so bright you could read the newspaper. Uh, you had a railroad office switching system in New York destroyed. The event came to be known as the New York Railroad Solar Storm of 1921. You know, there's a lot of information out there. We were told by the government years ago to basically prepare for six months without the grid. They kind of got to disclose, you know, this is part of the system. It's all out there. All the information's out there to put together the pieces and understand what's happening because <clears throat> they must kind of tell us what's going to happen. And here we're talking about the controllers. Uh, they must tell us what they plan. It's just kind of a karmic law. This way it gets them out of a karmic loop. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we could see what's coming. Now, Cindy got from the guides... And so this is going to change uh, the message of the video. And we've been getting from the guides uh, that we are at a real critical juncture. And, you know, this is what uh, came through right now. Now, we're, we don't want to be doom and gloom. But at the same time, if we could help you guys prepare, if we could let you know that what we are getting, sensing, feeling is that no, this isn't just like every other time. Uh, this is not just fear porn, quote unquote. There's, you know, there's this, it's like a gag reflex with some people where they see something that they, they don't want to see. And, you know, maybe they're even a little nervous deep down inside that they feel like something is coming. So they immediately will just spew out, oh, it's just fear porn. You know, it's just like sweeping it under the rug so to speak. But what we get is, and we've been telling you guys, this feels different. This seems different. And so in meditation, you know, Cindy just got from the guides that, yeah, it is different. Well, the situation with the all the world and the United States is, is very paper thin. That's how they described it to me. And with all of our abilities coming, pouring in in the next few weeks, People are going to be so awakened. They need a way to stop it. They need a way to stifle us. They need a way to stop our abilities from coming online. And what they told me is that they're looking at things to stop people from being able to um, live a normal life. So everything that you need to do could become quite a struggle. And that's to keep your abilities um in check and make sure nothing comes online. It's critical. They need to do something. Yeah, we had one, you know, client that um, was well. We've had many <laughs> that um, are on the edge. You know, even per perhaps close to being, you know, suicidal uh, feeling. And you know, then we had the session, and then come back and check, and totally different situation. There totally uh, in a different place emotionally, and this has happened so many times. Greater things ye will do. Greater things you will do. Greater things the masses can do in these times. Everything we see here is interconnected. 
And, you know, the biggest thing that's going on right now is stopping ascension. They need to stop ascension. Why? Because they view humanity as they view the planet as a resource, a resource. If we ascend, they can't control us. They lost their resource. It's, it's like leaving the barn door open, the gate open, and all the sheep, all the cattle, they can rush right out. You're never going to get them all back. So just like a farmer might decide to do if he's faced with, well, you know, my circumstances are such that I can't keep caring for them. Maybe it's the drought. I don't have enough water for them all. Maybe it's, you know, famine from food shortages. I don't have enough food for them all. Uh, or, you know, even if they, well, in the case of humans, recognize and learn how to escape from their pen. Maybe I'm better off cutting my losses and sending them into uh, be processed, quote unquote. So at least we could salvage something from the situation. That's how a farmer would look at things. That's how, you know, a rancher might look at things. I should be able, you know, maybe I should salvage what I could salvage from the situation. Or maybe I could, I know they're going to escape this pen. Maybe I could hurt them into another pen. That way, you know, they might not be on, uh, that the, might not be in the pen called planet Earth, but they might find themselves on another planet when they come back into the flesh after leaving this reality. Because the body, again, the body's just a vehicle. View it as a car, view it as a suit, view it as clothes. It's just a vehicle for the consciousness to explore this 3D reality. So that's exactly what is going on here. Lower the vibrations, lower the frequency, counteract what's happening naturally through the sun, through the cosmic rays, the DNA mutations, the evolutionary leaps. We see so many dead ends on the human family tree. What happened to Neanderthal? What happened to the Denisovans? What happened to Cro-Magnon? What happened to Homo habilis, Homo erectus? It goes on and on and on. Here today, gone tomorrow, and then there's a new one that pops up. And as we've talked about before, Cro-Magnon, Denisovans, and Neanderthals, bigger, stronger, and larger brains. Were they really just brutes? Maybe they were actually a little bit too much to handle. Mm -hmm. So we know about this, and this is talking all about how our GPS is especially vulnerable and basically, it gets down into the fact that we have about a, they, they're saying about a 12% chance of a Carrington type event, which could lead to what the government would say is perhaps 90% loss of the population, according to their studies, and about a 40% chance of something that could take out the grid for days or perhaps weeks as well. And when we see, like here out of Electroverse, we had a weak CME that caused the KP index to hit seven. This is because our shields are down. As we've been saying, shields are down, Captain. Shields are down. Like imagine, you know, if you're sparring and all of a sudden, you know, you think you stop sparring and then the person you're sparring hits you in the gut when you're not prepared. You're doubled over. Whereas if you had time to brace for it, your shields are up, you could handle it. Well, the planet shields are down, so it doesn't take as much to cause havoc. And that's part of the times that we're in. And then, of course, we could add to the mix all the artificial flavoring around the world. So many satellites, tens of thousands of satellites being rushed up into space, you know, going back to 2017. And and makes me think of all those mysterious visits to Antarctica. What was the Pope doing in Antarctica? Mm -hmm. What was the leader of the Eastern Orthodox Church doing in Antarctica, as well as top politicians, the president? Were they meeting with some individuals? Were they meeting with beings? How are humans controlled politically, religiously, and through the healing, quote-unquote, system that's upon the planet? 
And we see this how Yahoo Finance blackouts threaten the entire U.S. West this summer as the heat awaits. Well, when Texas happened, we got from the guides it's going to happen in the summer, too. And it's going to be perhaps other areas as well. You know, the entire West is vulnerable. You know, Texas, again, there's certain states uh, that the powers that be are not happy with. And that includes Texas and Florida as well as others. And we also got that the whole Texas freeze, which also really hit Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, super hard, Kansas. That could happen again this year as well in the winter. So what are we going to do when the grid goes down and there's blackouts? And when you look at what they were projecting here, you see the different models. And we see the sun activity spiking above the models already. What's that going to look like, you know, when we get something much more significant? We don't know. It, it's just not going to be a good thing. We have to be prepared spiritually, emotionally. What's happening is our abilities are coming online. We are so much more sensitive than we have been in the past, and people are starting to feel that. And the reason we get sensitive is so we can start to read the information on the outside of us and we can react as such as needed but they're going to use this sensitivity and try to clamp down on human beings and make it very uncomfortable for them to have this extra sensitivity and so we've been talking about the uh, artificial flavoring and we see pipeline shut down hernando de soto bridge cracked in memphis sinkhole in missouri draining a lake it's lost like a third of its water already coincidence or signs of the big one along the new madrid in the midwest or maybe both you know and again x marks the spot with those two eclipses and as i shared with you guys you know there's legends there's the etruscans who Settled in Italy, very interesting people. They remember a time when the moon wasn't there. The moon was brought there by two brothers. Hmm, two brothers. There's something about two brothers in those Sumerian tablets, isn't there? Yeah, there is, isn't there? Interesting, really interesting. So technology, think about the technology again of a civilization that's thousand years ahead of us what if they're 200,000 years ahead of us what if they're a million years ahead of us what if the Sumerian Kings list is actually showing lifespans of beings that are not from here that can rule for 40,000 years if that single individual could rule for 40,000 years and let's say that 40,000 years is equivalent to a king becoming king at 30 and ruling until his death at 70 hmm what if these Beings live 80,000 years, just one of them, 100,000 years. Can you imagine the technology that they would have? They can make things that would look like the act of the creator of the entire multiverse is doing it. But no, it's just them. Two giant cracks in the ground closed down highways in Mexico, fissure buildings and fissure buildings around. You see... We're seeing massive signs. You know, we had massive cracks in Arizona. We had massive cracks over in Kenya. We've had massive cracks in Peru. Just uh, incredible all over the globe going on. Uh, we've talked about expanding Earth, too. Does the Earth actually expand? It's interesting that when you put the land masses together, they really do fit together pretty well. And just about planetary evolution, too, because, you know, the planet's evolving, the consciousness of the planet's evolving, the planet's heading to 5D. It's up to us to try to head to 5D with the planet. Will there be a timeline split? How exactly does the rapture and ascension fit into everything? You know, we've covered all these things many, many times in many videos, but, you know, we've done about 4,000 videos now, 3,500 to 4,000. So I recognize new people are coming in all the time. It all goes together. You could see how everything goes together. Now, we did get, too, again, that the big event, the magnetic reversal with perhaps crustal displacement, 
we feel still we've getting from the guides that that's still like 20 years or so away. Mm -hmm. That's not right around the corner. Uh, the, the issues to deal with that are right around the corner are really mostly geopolitical as we're having issues now. Although geopolitical is extremely important to keep an eye on because that's, that's the avenue they're going to take to make a lot of people very uncomfortable. So we need to be able to free ourselves from the system as best we can, you know, even if it's just baby steps, even if it's just one little thing, just get yourself as far away from being indebted to the system as you possibly can. Well, that last one was talking about basically landslides and a bridge down in uh, the Philippines. We weren't able to open it because they want to basically frustrate us to the point where we just basically stop, you mm -hmm. know, and stop making videos. And some there was a comment out there. Somebody said, you know, how do you even know that Dra the Draco or you know extraterrestrials exist? Well, well, for us, it's because we've had direct contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we've 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 seen, sensed, and felt, and gotten the direct attacks from them. So yeah, we have absolutely no doubts about it, regardless of what other people think. But you could go back and look at traditions all around the globe, and you'll see common stories. You know, whether you're in the American Southwest, whether you're over in Southeast Asia, you know, there are so many legends everywhere you go about these reptilian type of beings, often very fond of H-U-M-A-N B-B-Q. Mm -hmm. Not nice, not nice beings. And then, you know, you could start by looking into uh, David Icke. You know, David Icke has done a lot of work on this for, for decades and decades. And while we don't agree with him 100%, uh, I do think he's correct with quite a few things, including the fact of these shapeshifters. Look at the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Talks all about that and how they're not going to be able to hold their form. How convenient that you can't see everybody's faces. The Ring of Fire is Shaking Heart, 6.0 quake off the coast of Fukushima, Japan, just before uh, 6.6 since thousands running for shelters into the streets in Indonesia. And yeah, I've shared before that if I had to pick the hardest place to go through these times with, I think Indonesia would be one of the hardest. They get tsunamis, they get earthquakes, they get volcanoes going off, uh, you know, they get cyclone activity, they get everything, everything. There's videos there as well. That would be one of the toughest places, one of the places I would not choose for these times. Severe storms claim the lives of 16, affect over 70,000 other people across Ethiopia and China and the U.S. Are, are really battling for influence in here. And China's been doing this. They have the foresight. Uh, they've been doing this perhaps to a little higher degree than the U.S. And, you know, this area here and just above it may end up being one of the biggest bread baskets as we see the deserts green. And that is the, the scramble for assets is really very real. Yet at the very, very top, they understand that this is all a symphony, an orchestration at the very top. But again, it's something that I would say the majority of the policymakers, the majority of people in the political parties and the governments and stuff, they might have inklings that something feels a little bit off, but I don't think they know. It's, it's a very, very select few that really, really know. And those tend to be in certain secret circles, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Destructive tornado rips through Wuhan, killing eight people, injuring 280 in China. And now, you know, we were talking about the Western drought in the U.S., the worst drought in 40 years, hit southern Madagascar. This is the extremes that we have, this perfect uh, tsunami of crop losses and you know supply chain disruptions historic cold spreads throughout the u.s breaking low temperature records from the 1800s the extremes are going to keep continuing and keep basically going more in each direction although at some point i do think it's going to turn to be consistently colder and colder but again with all the artificial flavoring that really puts a big question mark in there 350 rare antelopes killed by lightning in Kazakhstan. And then we have 18 elephants lost 
in a forest in India that were killed by a lightning strikes as well. So the plasma discharges are increasing. You know, we've experienced intense storms in, in our travels in Mississippi, mm -hmm. uh, as well as in Texas, Louisiana. And three major reasons why, why the super blood moon eclipse on May 26 will be a very big deal. Well, these eclipses that are coming up, for one, you know, it, it's a super moon, so it's going to be closer to the Earth and thus have more of an energetic impact on us. These two eclipses, because we have the lunar, two weeks later we have the solar, were intended to, to amplify positive energies coming in. And this is why you, you, the likelihood of seeing major events now also are going up, 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 because they need to counteract that. As we were saying, you know, if the farmer knows that his his whole flock's going to, you know, book out the back door, so to speak, and he can't close that back door, then he might decide, you know, to basically start culling the herd, so to speak. Create distractions, create drama, and also just lower the vibrations. So blood moon and a ring of fire eclipse that's going to follow in June. Thoughts, Cindy? Yeah, I mean, this is really, really a very important time. And, <clears throat> you know, we always talk about finding a spiritual practice. And it's that 10 minutes you give yourself, even if you just start with five minutes to give yourself, <clears throat> sorry, in the day, in the beginning of the day, to help make things go a little bit smoother, that's going to become critical. It's not it's not just going to cushion things a little bit. It's going to cushion things a lot for you because our sensitivity is going to go way up. You know, we are evolving. We are changing. Uh, and all of these energies coming in to amplify this, they're going to do what they can to try to really hold you down. And it's going to be, it's either going to be a big wave of stuff that's going to affect people in a huge way, or it's going to become more individual and really hamper people at their growth. I always say new level, new devil. And whenever you're just about to um, spring up in, in your own world or up in evolution, something comes to try to clamp down on that. So be prepared. I think preparation and having our mind set, understanding that this, this is going to be difficult for us to do or it might be hindered, that's the number one thing to know. And then you're at least you're not shocked. You're not surprised. You have some kind of fair warning. And also you're in the understanding that, yeah, your abilities are going to come online. Isn't that exciting? Now start honing them. You start with that five or 10 minutes in the morning of meditation or mantras, start honing them. And then people say, well, how do I use my abilities? It will come to you. I promise it will come to you. You'll just know it's that divine knowing that we're all born with. Yes. Yeah. These, these times are an uh, amazing opportunity for spiritual growth. Amazing. This is key. This is critical. This is the end of a, an era. So, you know, you, you can't get bigger than where we're at now. There's been other times when these cullings have happened, when, you know, the farmer decides, you know, to basically trim the herd, so to speak, cut losses. But this is different because there's a, a massive doorway that's going to open up to allow beings to go up into the higher echelons and escape the you know three and four D karmic loop that has been existing for forever you know millennia. This is prime time. This is key. Uh, develop those regular daily practices, mm -hmm. whatever they are that suit you. You know, maybe your mind goes so much that you need to do something more like a, a moving meditation, like a yoga or like qigong or tai chi, things along those lines. Or perhaps you're able to focus. And so, you know, still meditation is, is beneficial. I, I would hardly encourage people to do the Vedic mantras because the, the vibrations, they are all in tune with the chakras and they will open up the chakras and get the kundalini flowing and you know they will definitely also start dispelling the negative energies that attack people and you know you have to really hone in on what feels good to you but be consistent and you know if you can't sense energy look at your diet and what you're taking in 
you know, are, are you constantly, you know, hooked up to all the technologies? Are you drinking Cokes, drinking fluoridated water? You know, that just calcifies the pineal gland, shuts you straight down. Are you eating all the junk food, all the GMOs, all the modified stuff? Are you allowing other things into your body that are shutting you down? Uh, or, you know, also, are you going and see the DR and getting PRE scribed stuff that, again, shuts you down? Because mm -hmm. all these things shut you down. All of them do. You know, so it takes an effort to decouple from the system because the system is all about shutting down, locking down, keeping the herd in the pen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And look around for alternatives. And one of the, the problems with alternative healing is if you're eating sugar, you're filling up the cells full of that sugar. So when you take another another vitamin or another mineral, the cells are already full of sugar. There's, there's no way for that vitamin or that mineral to take its spot inside the cell to do its healing. So that's one way they keep people on those other things is because the alternative healing might not be effective. Why? Because you're eating sugar. So you see how they have everything choreographed. You know, they feed you sugar and make sure that you can't use an alternative way to heal. So guys, thanks for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed to both channels. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Anybody that wants to set up an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com. And do check out evolutionaryenergyarts.com, the website. As always, stay prepared out there. God bless and namaste. Namaste.